If you are an artist songwriter without a publisher, how do you secure sync opportunities? Like, do you need to have a publisher? And the answer is no. You don't need to have a publisher. You can certainly secure sync opportunities without a publisher, especially now. There are so many sync licensing representation companies that will happily put your music forward for projects and take a fee off of anything that they secure. So they'll take 25, 30, 35 percent of you know whatever they secure, and you don't need to have a publisher for that. There's also independent artists that don't even have. A sync rep, and they might get contacted directly, or you know, you can try and reach out on your own. Although I do recommend finding a sync company because it is so standardized now, and the music supervisor pool is really finite and relationship based. So it really is important that you are contacting the supervisors and in touch with them on a regular basis, the way that a proper professional sync licensing company would be to get the most opportunity. So it is worth it to, you know, give up that percentage, give the commission, because it truly is a very busy job that an artist can't do on the regular. That said, publishers can also be an incredible asset. There's all kinds of deals that you can do with a publisher or a sync rep company. What we do with a lot of our writers and published artists is we work really closely with them to help put them in the room with different writers and producers. We give them institutional knowledge of what is going on in the sync world so that they can help perfect their writing and their craft to increase their opportunity to get syncs. We're sharing, you know, projects that are ongoing. This film is looking for this kind of song. This uh, supervisor reached out and wants to do, you know, a song kind of like this. Can you knock this out, you know, with feedback? And we go back and forth with the artists and we help curate the demo and send it to the contact. So we're giving that information as a publisher. And we're also putting this writer together with this artist and, you know, coming up with kind of ideas for them, helping, you know, give feedback on their demos, a and ring like what we think is really useful for sync. And then sometimes, you know, they don't want that feedback or they just want it from like an artist perspective or they, they want something that really is going to work for sync. And then we can step in with all of our knowledge and information. So it really depends on what you're looking for as an independent artist. There are some artists that we work with where we just represent their music. We take a commission. They write their album. They tour and we just pitch their album for projects. And that's the extent of the relationship. And then there's other artists that we publish that we're working with every single day. They're in the studio every day with a different writer, a different artist. They're working on this project, that project. It kind of runs the gamut just depending on what you're needing as an artist and where you're at in your career. What is a sync library? So there are many different sync companies out there. There are certain sync companies that really only prefer to work with artists that are just writing their own material for their EPs, for their albums, releasing singles, doing shows. They might be well-known or they might be under the radar and they're just representing that music to put forward for projects. And then there's other companies out there that are building sync libraries that are working with more composers, more artists that are maybe uh, producers in the studio on a daily basis that are just kind of writing cues for TV, for film, for ads. I don't want to use the word jingle, but if that helps put it in perspective, it, it's really more about much lower fees, kind of like bulk fees for smaller pieces of music that might be just kind of snippets or one minute, uh, two minute cues of any kind of music that you can think of. Like we need a country song that's this BPM that has this kind of vocal, you know, tag on it. And they're just kind of banging it out. And you're building a sync library of just anything you can think of. Every genre, every tempo, any style, not really music to be released or for an artist or for a project. That's really more of a sync library. Is there such a thing as writing for sync? Yes, there is. And I would say that it has become much more popular to write for sync now. And I would also say that it's something that you should do with a grain of salt and uh, very tread carefully would be my advice because I have seen over the last like 10 years 
it become much more of a thing to write for sync. There was a period where, you know, music that was used, especially in advertising, was very safe, uh, feel good, um, happy, light. And then it kind of turned into a bit more of, you know, trends in rock music. And then it was a bit more taking more risk in the advertising space. But people started catching on of what was working really in advertising. And this had always been going on, but it just became much more popular and known to, you know, the average songwriter, artist that also coincided with the ability to record music now that anyone can do, right? You don't have to go to a studio. You don't have to pay tons of money to release a song. You can literally do it in your bedroom. And if you've got the chops, it can sound really good. And, you know, you can write a song for an ad. Like, you can do that uh, for sure. But what we've seen, it has become almost too easy, almost too popular. And kind of what you're seeing in advertising is is a little bit of that. And now what we're seeing on the back end is the supervisors and the advertising agencies and the brand saying, we don't want something written for sync. They want something that is authentic, that is a real artist. The trick, the dance is to meet somewhere in the middle, right? To do your authentic art, to do, you know, speak to what you're seeing, feeling, experiencing, observing as an artist, as a songwriter. But could it also work for sync? You got to figure that out. But it really should be both. That is the goal, at least as, you know, for us, when we're talking with our artists and songwriters, it's don't just write for sync. Like, of course, there's going to be, like I said, the gray area, a specific project that's wants something, it's going to work, they're going to use it, like, there's still going to be those ads that are just going to use something that you're like, oh, yeah, that sounds like a sync song, right? Um, But at the end of the day, for longevity, it really should be something that you truly are proud of, that you want to stand behind, that is your art, that is your work, that is your expression, but also works for sync. And that's the magic. What I would say to new songwriters and any kind of advice that I could lend is to diversify what you're doing. Like, don't only decide you're only going to do this. You really should try a few different avenues and really find out like what you're good at and be true to that. Don't just say I'm going to write, you know, just to get syncs or I'm just only going to release stuff, right? You got to be open to different avenues of being an artist and a songwriter. I also think it's really important to love what you do. Your job should not feel like work. You should love what you're doing. And so you have to find out what you love, right? And so the way to do that is by, you know, networking, taking different internships. Like it's really hard to be an artist and a songwriter and to survive on that income. So if that is what you want to do, go for it, but also continue to network, continue getting experience. There's so much that can be done within the music business on the creative side. It's like incredible. It's so rich with the different opportunities that there are. So don't sell yourself short by only focusing narrowly. Broaden your perspective. I would also say that, especially in music supervision and synchronization, the field of, you know, the gatekeepers is finite. Like you have to approach it with a great amount of respect because it is relationship based. So, you know, if you are reaching out to a sync company or to a music supervisor or to an an agency or a freelancer, keep your outreach short, like don't attach big files, be respectful. If you're reaching out to a sync company to try to get them to represent you, look at their roster. Like, does it make sense for you? Do you have the material that would work for them? Reference something that you like on their roster. Don't just do cold outreaches and like misspell one of their company names. Be very mindful of like how you're doing your outreach. When you are songwriting with other people, make sure that you're addressing who owns the song, what are the splits. Do that up front and very clearly. I know that it can be so uncomfortable for some artists and songwriters, but really it shouldn't be. It should be something that should just be laid out so that when there is an opportunity or money on the table, it doesn't hold up the process because I've definitely seen that happen. So that would be some of my advice for, for songwriters and artists starting out. And again, just as much experience as you can get 
as much resume building as you can do is just only going to serve you for the long run in the future.